namaste good day and very warm welcome to all of you who have joined here for the 7th edition of the international day of you 2021 i am khemchand bi gupta you teacher at netaji subhashchand bose indian culture center on behalf of the high commission of india kuala lumpur would like to take this opportunity to especially thanks isa foundation malaysia gopio malaysia heartfulness malaysian indian youth council ayu center atmaseva ashram malaysia yoga wellness bharat club sahaj yoga and marwari yoga manch for taking part of this year's virtual celebrations we will begin today's program with a special address from his excellency sri mridul kumar high commission of india to malaysia a very good day to everyone on behalf of the indian high commission and on behalf of the indian cultural center in kuala lumpur i bring greetings and warm wishes to our yoga friends in malaysia and in india on the occasion of the international day of yoga 2021 like in the past years we will be celebrating international day of yoga with our partner organizations with tamil schools with gopio and other like minded organizations in a very befitting manner dear friends you will recall that it was the government of india under the leadership of honorable prime minister shri narendra modi that took this proposal of declaring 21st june as the international day of yoga by the united nations through the efforts of government of india the un decided to celebrate 21st june as the international day of yoga and in 2015 it was the first time that this event was done since then it is the seventh year in running the popularity of yoga the number of people who have joined this wonderful practice has increased by many folds yoga has become the theme of the day and we are thankful to the ministry of ayush to our honorable prime minister and to the government of india for bringing such large awareness about the benefits of yoga to the humanity the composite mind body soul spectrum that it deals with and it enhances brings the benefit of yoga to the entire people worldwide in these times of pandemic yoga assumes a great relevance when we are unable to connect with each other in a one on one manner and when we are confined within the four walls of our house it is yoga that provides us mental solace that provides us the happiness of spirituality and that also keeps us fit physically with these words i wish you all a very happy international day of yoga and i hope and pray that the practice of yoga brings health happiness peace and comfort in our lives may we pray for collective healing sarve bhavantu sukhina sarve santu niramya sarve bhadrani pashyantu ma kashte buk bhag bhagvet i thank you greetings everyone on this wonderful occasion of international day of yoga 2021 that is being celebrated all over the world the high commission of india kolalampur brings you this program on yoga and ayurveda 
many of us know that yoga and ayurveda are connected in some ways we know that they both originated in the land of bharat but what is ayurveda how are ayurveda and yoga related to each other why should we have to know about ayurveda how can ayurveda help in attaining the stages of yoga and many more questions would have come to your mind you can find answers to these questions and much more in this program please join me in exploring more about ayurveda and its relationship with yoga in my interaction with dr g harini ramya md ayurveda dr g harini ramya is the ayurveda practitioner deputed by the ministry of ayush government of india to the traditional and complementary medicine division of ministry of health malaysia with the vast clinical experience of 17 years dr harini ramya explains about ayurveda and its role in yoga practice good day to you doctor my question is what is ayurveda namaste ayurveda is the indigenous system of medicine that is the integral part of the vedas ayu means life or life span and veda means science or knowledge So Ayurveda is the knowledge about the quality of life and the quantity of the life span. Simply put, Ayurveda is the science of life. Ayurveda states that health is the primary foundation to attain the purusharthas or the objectives of life, namely dharma, artha, kama and moksha. In order to attain health, you have to understand and follow the science of life which is ayurveda how ayurveda and yoga are related you can say that ayurveda and yoga are the two sides of the same coin that serves the same purpose to attain the absolute they are interrelated healing sciences of india stemming up from the vedic wisdom yoga is one of the shat darshanas or vedic philosophies whereas ayurveda is one of the upavedas so basically they have their common foundation in the vedas they have specific roles and functions with some overlapping of each other at some planes yoga is the scientific system for spiritual practice or sadhana whereas ayurveda is the scientific system for health or swasthya i think you lost me there could you please detail this concept doctor it will be clear when we understand the purposes of ayurveda and yoga the true purpose of yoga is to relieve the sufferings of the soul and release it from the cycle of birth and death with self realization yoga is the systemic inner spiritual practice its primary intent or aim is to help the sadhaka or the follower in the spiritual plane ayurveda is the vedic system of medicine that emphasizes on the promotion of health and prevention of diseases that will help the human or the yoga practitioner to achieve his goal a sadhaka has to be physically and psychologically healthy in order to pursue his spiritual path and achieving this health is the purpose of ayurveda i believe now you can see that ayurveda has to be the inherent foundational step of yoga does ayurveda talk about yoga of course ayurveda talks about yoga and moksha one of the classical ayurvedic texts called as charaka samhita dedicates few chapters on the description of atma its origin its purpose and steps to attain self realization or moksha you can see beautiful descriptions in those chapters a medical text explaining about spiritual concepts would be brushed aside as unscientific nowadays but this is the uniqueness of ayurveda this holistic view of life as a physical mental and spiritual combination makes ayurveda the oldest system of medicine 
that is being practiced continuously it is interesting to know that the ayurvedic text talk about yoga but why should i know ayurveda to pursue yoga the higher aim or goal of yoga is the union of atma with the superior one called as samadhi the various stages of ashtanga yoga and hatha yoga direct the seeker towards this final destination the practices of asana pranayama shat karma mudra and bandha strengthen and cleanse the physical body invigorate the prana and raise the kundalini these form the preliminary practices for attaining spiritual goals as you can see these are body centric practices and why should we do body centric practices because the physical body is the abode or the substratum for the soul or atma as we are incapable of reaching the atma directly we follow the pathway of training the body training the breath training the mind to reach the atma you can realize that we are moving from the visible to the invisible component gradually through yoga and what is the basis of the body panchamahabhutas ayurveda defines life as the combination of panchamahabhutas and atma panchamahabhuta form the physical and mental planes of the body in order to have a better control over your body you have to understand your nature or swabhava ayurveda is the scientific way to understand your body and that is why you have to know ayurveda to pursue yoga have you ever wondered why you found it very difficult to stand in tadasana even for a minute when you started yoga whereas your friend could do that without any hitch true doctor when i started yoga class i could not stand for more than a minute in tadasana but i could do ardha chakrasana very comfortably why it so doctor yes this is because of your nature or prakriti you have to understand your prakriti to find out what suits you the best the knowledge of physical prakriti will be helpful in understanding your physical body and the knowledge of mental prakriti will be helpful in understanding your mental temperament how this knowledge will help in the yoga practice doctor once you understand your physical prakriti you can align your diet your lifestyle and your yoga asana practices accordingly when you understand your mental prakriti you can control your breath effectively become aware of your emotional turbulences and recognize the meditation practices that suit you That sounds interesting. Could you please explain more about the prakriti and about the diet and lifestyle, doctor? In the physical body, the tridoshas or the energies create a unique combination for each atma that also reflects in the mental plane. This is called as prakriti or the body mind constitution. Similarly, in the mental plane, trigunas create a unique permutation for each mind called as manasika prakriti. In simple terms sharirika prakriti means the body type and manasika prakriti means the mental temperament for easy understanding ayurveda classifies the whole population widely under seven body types these are based on the predominance of tridoshas or energies that i mentioned earlier vata prakriti pitta prakriti kapha prakriti are the basic ones most of the persons will have predominance of two doshas in their body namely vata pitta pitta kapha or kapha vata rarely there will be a balanced state of three doshas called as samadosha prakriti which is considered to be the best how can i understand my prakriti let me try to explain in simple terms do you remember me saying that the physical body is made up of panchamahabhutas is yes, doctor so 
the panchamahabhutas or the five great elements space air fire water and earth combine in different proportions to form the tridoshas vata dosha is composed of space and air element so if a person has the predominance of space and air element in his body can you imagine how his body would be this is very new to me doctor i could not imagine in that direction it is all right you know that space is empty and light whereas air is mobile and dry so the persons of vata type or of lean built have dry body are mentally quick enjoy movement and are very flexible and creative so which asana do you think will benefit him i think he will perform the fast moving asanas better those will suit him that's where you go wrong you should not find asanas that are easier for him to perform rather than that you have to find the asanas that will benefit him his body has the predominance of space and air elements in order to balance those elements he has to increase the slow and steady grounding asanas in his routine like padmasana virasana tadasana the breathing practices should be deep and slow so that they calm his raving mind next comes the pitta prakriti pitta is mainly composed of fire element supported by a little of water element pitta types are of medium built with warm body they have good appetite and very competitive go getters hence they should do more relaxing and cooling types of asanas in their routine and the breathing techniques should also be planned accordingly the third body type is kapha prakriti kapha is composed of earth and water elements now can you imagine what would be his body nature let me try will the kapha type person be bulky and cold yes that's a good attempt kapha people are bulky a bit slow calm and kind they are soft and have good memory can you guess the yoga postures beneficial to him those postures with more movements i guess yes asanas that involve continuous stretch of movements like surya namaskara done in a little fast pace and warming and energizing routines will be beneficial to kapha body types now can you realize why you weren't able to perform tadasana like that of your friend when you started yoga this description is only to give you an idea about the sharirika prakriti and there is much more when there is a combination of body types the concept of prakriti is complex and it is better to consult an ayurveda physician to know more about your prakriti every yogasana and pranayama can be mastered with the correct technique and regular practice What about the ayurvedic concept of diet and lifestyle in yoga practice? Yoga advises about mita ahara that is moderate consumption of nutritious food. Sattvic diet is given primary importance in the yoga diet. You would be surprised when you know that ayurveda prescribes hita ahara, mita ahara and kala ahara for the promotion of health and prevention of diseases hita ahara means wholesome food mita ahara means moderate consumption in all aspects of food especially the taste the quantity and the varieties and kala ahara means the consumption of food at the right time that is after the digestion of the previously ingested meal when you wiki about Mita ahara you can find the ayurvedic scriptures in the description this shows that diet part of yoga is very well elaborated in ayurveda next the lifestyle in ashtanga yoga yama and niyama are the integral part of yoga 
they are the first two steps that have been stressed by the yogacharyas as the lifestyle practices these practices are detailed under the dhinacharya sadvrata aspects of ayurveda which have to be followed regularly the 10 yamas are almost similar to that of dashavita papakarmas that ayurveda forbids in sadvrata thus ayurveda and yoga go hand in hand if your objectives are physical and mental health if you are looking for atmagnana or spiritual knowledge then ayurveda builds the foundation and helps you master the first four stages of ashtanga yoga starting from yama niyama asana to pranayama thanks for explaining about the relationship between yoga and ayurveda doctor what is your advice on yoga practice practicing yoga beyond the yogasana and pranayama sessions in every action you do is the real purpose of yoga yoga is the best way to create awareness of you within yourself you become aware of your body parts you become aware of your breathing you become aware of your thoughts and emotions and you become aware of your sensual experiences it is the way to reconnect to yourself i find many people who are enthusiastic about their yoga practices at first and gradually lose their interest finding the yoga routine and lifestyle practices that align with your body nature is one of the keys to pursue yoga without any lack of enthusiasm an ayurveda physician will help you find your nature and the lifestyle to balance your energies the yoga master can guide you with the right practices of yogasana pranayama and meditation is ayurveda service available here in malaysia the government of india has deputed one ayurveda physician and two ayurveda therapists to the traditional and complementary medicine division of ministry of health malaysia four ayurveda treatments shirodara kati basti griva basti and janu basti are offered at the two tncm units in the malaysian government hospitals namely hospital port dickson and hospital rehabilitation cheras you should get a referral letter from a registered medical practitioner either from the government clinic or private clinic to avail these services thanks for this informative program doctor this interaction widened my view on ayurveda and yoga hope you all found this program to be helpful on the 7th international yoga day let us integrate yoga and ayurveda in our lives for health and well being thank you thanks for watching jai hind